Come on, come on, come on, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's unpredictable, it's complex in structure because it moves all the time. So you don't have something that you can use as a visual reference point to stabilize the drone in. Forests are often described as the lungs of the world, covering approximately 31% of the planet's surface. Sadly, this is rapidly shrinking, with an estimated area the size of Greece being destroyed every year. Monitoring the health of these forests plays a crucial role in protecting them, but the sheer scale presents challenges. We are working on this project to create the drones that can live in forests and sense environmental parameters that can then help in turn to protect the ecosystem, protect the environment. If a tree falls in a forest and no one hears it, does it actually make a sound? Well, I can't answer that philosophical question, but perhaps Professor Mirko Kovac from Imperial College in London can. He heads up the Aerial Robotics Lab, and they're sending out squads of mini-robots to live and collect data in forests. They're sort of robotic researchers. Like animals live in the forest, the drones or different types of robots could have a symbiotic co-living with the animals, with the trees, with the humans, in a life-supportive and sustainable manner. So not intruding drones that uh, people are afraid of, but rather drones that are fully integrated into the cycle to really support the environment and support the healthy development of those environments. What kind of data are you hoping to collect? The data that is very important to collect includes humidity, temperature, light, movement, and the structure of the forest. So this can be done in different methods and drones today are already used a lot for ecology and forest science. For example, they're used to fly above the forest and detect the, the different indexes that can give indications of how the forest develops and grows. But this data is often not enough to really get the validate the models, the climate models, the ecological models, and like this predict the changes in the, in the forest. The more detailed data is still collected by field researchers, a method which is expensive and sometimes dangerous. Mostly it's done with, you know, people walking around with measure tapes, for example, or climbing up the trees to place sensors and so on. And so the robotics and aerial robotics is a very powerful tool that can be used for those purposes and will be used more and more in the future. Drones could potentially collect data needed on a scale necessary to track environmental change. They can also get closer to the treetops. So what is needed are methods that can detect parameters inside of the canopy, so in the dense foliage, close to the tree trunks, in the different levels of the forests. And for that, the technologies are really not existing sufficiently. A forest environment provides many challenges for aerial robots, but for Professor Kovac's team, that's all part of the fun. Come on, come on, come on, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's unpredictable, it's complex in structure, and it's complex because it moves all the time. So we, we did some trials in the rainforest with our drones, and so if you fly in the middle of the rainforest at 20 meter height or 50 meter height, so like in the middle of the foliage, everything moves, so you don't have a reference point, so you don't have something that you can use as a visual reference point to stabilize the drone in. The drones gather data which helps them meet the challenges of a shifting environment, building a type of artificial intelligence. How intelligent are these drones? I mean, could they take over by themselves? So artificial intelligence is a very interesting term and it's used a lot. So my, my toothbrush is artificial intelligent, it's written on my toothbrush. So what does it mean? What is really intelligence? And so when I think of intelligence, um, I refer to it as the lifelike intelligence. Integrating the computation, the perception, the actuation, and the materials and the structures and the chemistry all together. The goal of it is to create artificial animals that would really serve society, serve the world in a sustainable manner. Your drones seem to be kind of informed by the information around them. I think a helpful picture in 
terms of understanding intelligence is the development cycle of a, a human or an animal or an insect, let's say. So if a human is born, it's developing, right? So it's the brain is there, the, the body is there, the organs are there, the neural system, the muscles are there. So the baby learns to walk as it grows. So it learns the sensory input and to connect it to the actuators. It's an integrated process. It's not like in traditional robotics where we take actuators and control system and this is static and then we add the learning algorithm on top of it. So lifelike robotics will have to integrate the growing process, self-healing process and the mechanics with the control systems and all this needs to be co-evolved. So I think this is um, what I mean by the physical artificial intelligence. <laughs> Professor Kobach's team is working on drones that can place sensors in the tree canopy. One of the ways they do this is by shooting darts into the tree bark. What kind of limitations or design challenges did you face to be able to launch what seems to be a tiny sort of missile? Well, I wouldn't call them missiles. <laughs> I would call them sensors. These sensors can track ecosystem-wide changes in the forest over time. The main task is to detect where it needs to shoot the sensor, so it uses some visual 3D mapping capability to do that. It can have an integrated uh, control system that it can shoot those sensors with a certain level of precision to then um, assure that the sensor is placed where it should be placed. Power to launch the sensor at a target three meters away comes simply from the energy stored in a coiled spring. Another method they use is by perching on what's known as a tensile element, a solution inspired by nature. So if you imagine a spider, it uses a string to perch down the tree. So we have developed similar methods where trees can deploy string-based structures around trees so they can perch and sustain themselves or support themselves and like this, they don't need to use a lot of flight energy to remain aloft and sense the environment. The team plunder many of their design solutions from the animal world, especially from insects who arguably inspire drones more than birds. So a fly doesn't try to kind of slow down very much and then land like a bird. It's using a very different mechanism. It basically flies, um, it does slow down, but it can also crash land into the surface and use its mechanical structures to dampen this impact. So this we call mechanical intelligence or physical artificial intelligence, which is a very important method in nature of how to make animals robust to move in unknown outdoor environments. Professor Kobach's machines really are amazing and I can't help but be impressed by the ingenuity of this team of engineers at Imperial. The hope is the drones could soon deploy whole networks of sensors to boost the amount and precision of ecological data to help protect our forests. And the technology has potential in other areas too. It's not only limited to forests, it's also uh, sensing in urban environments around buildings. It's sensing for offshore infrastructure such as wind turbines. It's also sensing in construction and so on. So it's the same technologies or similar technologies can be applied through a wide variety of uh, impact sectors. And the forest ecology is one of them, but we work and are very active in all the others as well. So much science and tech in that story. And if you want more of that, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.